flourish when you act as you ought. Like, I think of like outside sources would be like what the world would want us to do. Like, like everything works like that. You're incomplete into this. We are incomplete. Well, I know, but but that that type of happiness is going to happen. No, no, it's not because it's simply tapping into your concupiscible passions, drawing you to the things that you delight in. So if, let's say if, if Apple were, every time I see an Apple commercial, it makes me want to get an Apple product. You know, I see it, I'm like, oh look, that's pretty, I want it. So what they're doing is they're tapping into something that's true about us, is that, and good about us, that we have these desires for things that are desirable. And that's part of how we're created. But the, but the problem with us is because of the, the effects of original sin, we put our loves in the wrong order. So we love our MacBook Pro more than we love our mother. Yeah, I know, I know, imagine that. <laughs> so, uh, that, so there's nothing wrong with what's happening there, right? It's just in the wrong order. So, and that's, that's because of original sin. But all things being equal, say there's no original sin. Say there's no original sin. You could fully love your automatic bubble maker. You know, that you've been sold by, you know, the automatic bubble, you know, salesman. <laughs> and, and, and you could love it, and it'd be wonderful. And, and you would delight in it. But you wouldn't delight in it as much as you delight in your mom, your personal relationships. See, see, love, happiness, happiness is not to the detriment of those things that are desirable. It is, it is um, proper happiness is putting everything that is desirable in the right order. That's the work of the virtues. So the virtues, the virtues are those powers within us that allow us to act like humans. Knowledge is a virtue. Judgment is a virtue. Courage is a virtue. Wisdom. Will you say that again? The virtues are... are the powers within us that allow us to be human. And that's why we seek after the virtues. We seek after the virtues so that we can be more human. When we, when we act viciously, we act less human. The more we practice vice, the stupider we become. As, as Aquinas says, the more like the dumb animals we become. Dumb in the sense of non-language using animals. Because we're Aquinas, we're the animals too. So, just the non-language using animals. But the other thing is, as, as we've been saying over and over again, is that uh, we are created for God. But that's a different thing. That's not simply happiness. Happiness is something on a very natural level. Flourishing is on a very natural level. But in the order of grace, God has built in this possibility in us of something greater than natural happiness. Something greater. It, and we call that beatitude. This is why I get so frustrated with certain English translations of Scripture. Um, I always check a couple of passages whenever there's a new translation that comes up, and one of them is the Magnificat. I always check the Magnificat, and I want to see I want to see what, uh, what what Mary says in the English translation there, because if I ever see a translation that says from this day all generations will call me happy, it's it's not that 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 translation of, of scripture is not worth my time because. <coughs> fundamentally misunderstands the difference between happiness and beatitude. Fundamental misunderstanding in the, in the translation. These are the very things that we're created for. And if they're confused, then we start to misunderstand what the whole divine dispensation is about. But it's not simply about being happy or being content or fulfilled or whatever. It's about divinization. It's about deification, becoming blessed. From this
this day all generations will call me blessed. So, those are our two ends. Happiness, blessedness. And this is all, all God's gift. Happiness because God is creator. He created the natural order. But also because he's savior. And he has allowed us the possibility to participate in the divine nature, the divine order. So these are two separate things, but they're intimately united. So why don't we why don't we take a break and we'll we'll, we'll get back to things and let's say about 10 15 minutes well, let's say about 2:30 uh, we'll uh, we'll get back to things because now I think that's a basic foundation if you have specific questions talk to me about it because this is just a basic kind of summation touching on these topics um, and in kind of a disjointed way. Um, so that we can talk about this. So that we can talk about this. Um, but to, to, to give, to, to, to drive the points home real quick that, uh, that I've spoken about so far is that uh, we are made for happiness, for flourishing, for natural flourishing, happiness, for beatitude. It in us, uh, and and I'll explain. Well, the reason why that is is baptism. So, but we can talk about that later. Uh, so, happiness, the attitude, uh, and also who God is. Um, God is uh, the fullness of. The All those, all those concepts that we have of God, we have to keep those in mind because that's going to be very important when we start talking about election momentarily. Um, and we have to remember that this whole process of salvation is something that is done to us. It's not something that we can